Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with Colorado forward Tyler Bay. Uh, Tyler, we've been sitting down and, and breaking down, you know, different prospects' films, some of their strengths, some of their weaknesses. And, and so we're going to dive into your film here, uh, the defensive end, the offensive end, and, you know, break down some areas where I thought you were really, really good and then maybe ask you some questions of, you know, areas you're still trying to improve also. So to me, I think your defensive versatility, your activity is one of your biggest strengths. You know, you're, you're all over the floor. I think you ranked sixth in steal percentage in our top 100 and then pretty high for your size and, and block percentage as well. How many positions do you think you can defend in the NBA? I think I, I, think I could defend all five. Uh, I think that when I'm switching on to guards, it's – it's just a mindset of just, uh, you know, standing in the stance and being low and, you know, just keeping my distance, make sure I got a hand up every time and being ready to contest every shot. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to start here with, with you guarding wings. So I thought you had a decent amount of success because you really have the size and frame of an NBA wing, right? Uh, but you played yeah. almost as a 4-5. or five. And here against Chris Smith, 6-8 wing, you do a great job of fighting over the top of the screen staying in front, and then taking that on-ball charge and had a lot of success against him, cutting off his penetration, staying down, and just kind of walling it up, making it a tough shot for him. Uh, what was that matchup like? It was a great. Chris Smith is a great player. Uh, he's someone that really improved this year. Uh, a lot of people didn't expect it, but he's a great player. It was, it was a lot of fun guarding him, and, and I feel like he made me better every game. We played UCLA, so. For sure. And then here against Stanford, uh, Jaden Delaire, I think, on the wing. Uh, yeah. Talk me through this play. I just opened my hips up too much, and I didn't force him. I didn't force him right. Yeah, and I think I that force him baseline. And I think that's one thing is yeah, keeping the ball along the sideline right, and then and then also like you said, if he's not a great shooter, I know he hit a three from the corner in that game also, but not a great shooter, giving yourself space and, and being able to kind of contain and contest right, and, and use your length, right. use your athleticism. Because uh, there are some times I feel like you give a guy a lane to the rim and then just kind of rely on your length and athleticism mm -hmm. to make a play. Uh, yeah. And then here against Trey Tinkle, you do that. But uh, look at this recovery here. I mean, that's that's a big-time play. Uh, take me through this one. Trey Tinkle's left-handed, so um, I knew he was going to drive left. For me to just recover, I had to – yeah, I was just trying to play without fouling him, really. And then, I mean, the block with the outside hand there, that's that's perfect. You know, that's really good technique. Yeah. Really good timing. You blocked a lot of shots on the perimeter this season. Uh, some really, really impressive yeah. moments. Because of your length and athleticism, you're able to recover at the rim really nicely. Here against Anthony Mathis, okay? I, I, like you said, staying low and then maybe having some more activity with your feet also will help you keep the ball in front. Uh, but again, here, watch this play. I mean, you're just longer and more explosive, you know? So you're able to recover at the rim really, really well. Uh, now, mm -hmm. keeping them in front and containing is probably the next step, but... I think overall you're really good at, at recovering at the rim, and I love your activity here with your hands. Watch this. You do that a lot. Uh, you seem pretty pretty revved up guarding the perimeter, and then again, uh, nice recovery at the rim just to force a really, really tough shot. But overall, I thought you did a really nice job, especially against Biggs. Do you remember this play at all? What are you looking at here? I'm just looking at He puts the ball in front of me. I'm swiping it every time. And that's really active hands, and you do a great job of swiping up, you know, and that's a good way to not to not pick up cheap fouls. So you're really, really active with your hands. Uh, and then do a nice job of sliding here with Shakur Justin. What type of player is he? He's a driver, a uh, low post scorer. Yep, right-hand driver, right? Yep. And so here catches kind of on the, on the wing. You know he's coming with that right hand to get downhill. Really, really good job. Uh, so... Guarding ball screens, okay? Like you said, you know, you may be playing more on the wing in the NBA, but, you know, given the way the game has gone, you might be playing some of that small ball four spot, maybe even some small ball five on occasion. And we're seeing yeah. a lot of guys play all over the floor. Here yeah. on this play, uh, what would you do differently? Oh, yeah, I definitely got to be up more on the screen and just help my guard out. Yeah, just be up, be ready, because even right here, you're just not ready for him to get downhill, right? Right. right. Um, so, you know, squaring up the ball, keeping it in front, because you're quick and athletic enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And here, you do a really, really good job of that, okay? You're more prepared, you're up, you're active, head in line with the ball, and anytime he's got to kill his dribble like that in a mid-range spot, you know, that's mm -hmm. a win for you. Uh, what happens on this possession? Yeah, I lost my man. So you mentioned not letting him get behind you, right? Right. I think that's a big part of it. But at the same time, Deshaun is kind of trailing here, and you got to help on the ball, right? So McKinley Wright probably could have helped you out with a little bit of a mm -hmm. tag there. 
Yeah, um, yeah. But but I do think it's important to you know be able to give yourself enough space to to get back to your man, and that's big time. Now, guarding the post, guarding on the interior, uh, you had to do that a decent amount this year, right? Just because of the position right. you played. What are what are the keys to being a good post defender when you're your size? And what were some of those battles like against Isaiah Stewart, Zeke Naji? I mean, there are multiple projected first round picks in the Pac-12 this year. I think it was just knowing personnel. Uh, if they're right hand and they go up their left shoulder, I have to cut that off. Um, and I, I feel like that if if it's a great player, I won't let him catch the ball as much. Um, and it was just contain him better. He won't, he won't do much work on the offensive end. So that's that. Yeah, and I, that's where I was really impressed is your three-quarter denials, your fronts. You got a ton of steals just being more active. You're almost like ducking underneath guys and, and just yeah. really maneuvering <laughs> around, right? Is yeah. it, that's, right? Where does that come from? I don't know. I think that's just be, me just being low and quick, um, making sure like my uh, making sure he doesn't know where I am on the post so he doesn't post me up. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're like uh, Houdini down there, just really hard to, hard to locate. And here you can see that against Stanford, here against uh, Oscar Da Silva. You know, you're fighting around, just active, man. You're just more active than the post player. And then here against Zeke Naji, what does he like to do? He likes to duck in, and he's, he's aggressive as hell. So yep. I, have to just, I really have to just move my feet right here. And so he goes for that duck in, and you just kind of ghost him, right? You almost pull the chair yeah. and then fight yeah. around. You're quicker, you're more explosive, and then you hit the ground. You hit the ground a ton this year. You, you were all yeah. over the floor. Um, <laughs> no, but that's what teams like to see, man. I think that energy... Is is you know really impressive and you know any coach is going to feel comfortable putting you in the game if if you play with that type of motor which you did this year and then here against Isaiah Stewart what's he like to defend? He's, he's I think he's a great player. He's super strong. Um, he can, he gets it in the post and you know he just does work. So he's a great player. Yeah, physical dude. And and here again yeah. just doing a really nice job of fighting around, not allowing the catch. You know, against a guy like that. Now, I know you got to rely on your quickness, but also, you know, continuing to play strong down there on the interior will be important. But you took a ton of charges in the post here against Oscar De Silva. Uh, do you know how many charges you took this season? I don't actually. It was it was a lot, right? If you had to ballpark yeah, it, what it was, would you guess? Yeah, it was definitely a lot. I don't know, around twenty five, maybe. Yeah, I mean, and you're doing it as the on-ball defender, as the weak side guy. Uh, so yeah. again, that's a that's an energizing play for for your teammates, for your fan base. And then, mm -hmm. as a back line defender, I thought you were really good. You guys were, according to Synergy, you were 16th in the country in, in defense at the rim in the half court. And you didn't really have any shot blockers aside from, from you. And so mm -hmm. I think you were a big part of that, uh, whether it's getting steals or getting blocks. Um, so take me through this play here, kind of in semi-transition. You remember this? I don't. All right, so you're just, what, reading the eyes of the guard, retreating, right, right. and then using yeah, your right. length, using your athleticism just breaking plays up, you know, that's, yeah. that's great. Uh, and then as the back line defender here, what are you looking at here? You're, you're around the, at the rim there. Yeah. I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even supposed to be there, but yeah, that's supposed to be Schwartz, right? Right, right, right. But even so just, you know, say those guys swap. Okay. And, and that should be you. Uh, you do a really good job of having your head on a swivel and kind of being in attack mode, like defensive playmaker. Uh, you're kind of a free safety out there on the court. Do you feel that way? Yeah, definitely. Have you always been a guy who played with this type of motor and energy? Uh, nah, I don't, nah, not at all. I think uh, it started in my sophomore year where I just started, like, you know, taking pride in our defense and, you know, just being more dialed in on things. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, your evolution defensively has been really impressive. I thought you, mm -hmm. you had some great moments this year, especially in these playmaking situations, you know, being able to read the, 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 the ball handler's eyes and just kind of jump the passing lanes. And then here, I love this, okay? It's a three-on-one situation, and this is perfect verticality technique. Like, that's, that's big time. That's how you draw it up. What are you looking at here as you retreat, and what's the key to, you know, making this play? I really just wanted him – I wanted to bait him into passing it, yep. whether it was Rokosevich or uh, the guard, the point yep. guard. But uh, whether, whether he passed it to either one of them, I was going to be ready to just jump straight up. And look at when you you even leave your feet before him, you know, and then and then you stay vertical. Really good timing, and again, that's how you draw it up. That's that's perfect verticality. Mm -hmm. Now this this was a big time play, okay? Kyler Kelly is what seven foot one. 
Yeah. What are you looking at here? Yeah, I'm just, that's just me tagging. I don't even think that was supposed to be me tagging, really, but that's just me being in the right place at the right time. Uh, extending the stance, keep my hand on the swivel. Uh, but yeah. And then you can, you can see your length there and, and your athleticism. Like I mm -hmm. said, that's a 7 1 center, and you're what, 6 7, you know, meeting him right. at the rim. Perfect timing. Yeah. I mean, every coach is going to absolutely love that if you do that consistently. And then you're able to do it from different areas, right? There you were kind of in that weak side spot helping at the rim. Look at, look at how far you're able to come here. Like you're just a magnet to the ball w with your mm -hmm. activity and, and all that. And it's not just blocking shots, like I said, okay? Here you have a side ball screen. What are you looking at here? I'm making sure that my man is on my right side and I know where he's at. Uh, and I'm really just tagging. And then, if, and then when you leave, it's going to be up to Deshaun, right, to sink inside of yours. And then, yeah, exactly. and then Gatling can get out to the corner if you have to. But you do a great job of meeting him outside the charge circle and then take the charge. Took a ton of charges this year. And I love this play also, okay? You turn it over and get it right back. Watch this. That's big time. You know, just, just being able to create turnovers like that and have an impact without scoring is a big part of your intrigue. But uh, in general, your team defense is, is big time. Like we, like we showed earlier, you can guard wings. You can guard point guards. You can slide up and, and protect the rim a little bit, and then you're active. Yeah. So I think as long as you take the blueprint that you had this season and, and continue to stay along that path where you're playing with constant energy, then you're going to be an impact player at the next level, uh, especially with your defensive rebounding. W were you always such a good defensive rebounder? Yeah, yeah. I think um, sophomore year is when like, it just started to become more easy. Uh, I started – just rebounding more, really. It was just, I had a nose for it. Yeah, and that's a big thing that, that stands out to me is just you're really, really instinctual going to get rebounds. You read the ball off the rim really well. And, and like I said, you were the second best defensive rebounder in our top 100 this year. Uh, last year, I think you averaged 15 rebounds per 40 minutes. So, I mean, you, yeah. just, you don't see that from guys your size often. So, uh, even if you do slide to the wing spot, I think – continuing to play with that motor is going to be huge and here's just kind of a glimpse of it just a, a few clips here against Oregon I like how you check CJ okay you still know he's there you find a body and then you just read the ball off the rim you're just quicker to it you know you tap the ball to yourself you tap it to teammates here again you check you know get into his body a little bit you're the low man and then just vacuum it you know you you just go get it you're quicker to the ball than your opponent now in the NBA you may face these type of guys right Zeke Naji's right. a big dude and you're not just going to be able to always out-athlete people. So uh, mm -hmm. constantly being aware, not getting pushed under the rim like that is going to be right. important. But again, you know, you're arguably the best rebounder in the draft, and, and I think that's a big part of your, your intrigue. Now, on the offensive end of the floor, okay, what do you think your role is going to be at the next level? Uh, running the floor, um, making open shots, uh, executing. Yeah, I, th I think that's it. And then also maybe being able to play out of that short roll as a diver a little bit here and there too when you yeah. do slide up to that to that big spot. Because I think last year you you played like 29, 30% of your offense out of the post. And mm -hmm. and I don't think that's going to happen as often. I, I wouldn't imagine. Right. You know, Not right. just because yeah. the NBA game is different, but you might be playing alongside Joel Embiid or, or Jokic or AD. You know? yeah. So you got to just be running around wreaking havoc, right? And, and we've seen you do that in transition here. I love this, okay? You can fill the lanes. You're the first one ahead, and then you target the ball and on his head. You know, you're a lob catcher. Uh, you finish above the rim. You got springs in your legs, uh, and then you can run down the center of the floor also. You always have, you know, vision on your point guard. I think you're going to be a point guard's dream because your ability to finish above the rim like that. Uh, and then on the offensive glass, really, really quick and active as well. Um, what are you looking at here? I was just, yeah, just taking him out. Um, a little spin move? My, uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. Just trying to get to the rim, really. Yep. Spin move against Tristan and Aruna. Dismiss him, and you're just quicker to the ball, like I said. You know, you really have a nose for it. Uh, you know, pogo stick type of leaper, really quick off your feet. And then here, what are you looking at as this ball comes off? I don't know. It's just, it's just I feel like that's a natural instinct for, uh, you know, just going up for the rebound and being ready to just put it back. And that's Onyeka Kongwu is a projected top 10 pick. You know, you catch yeah. him sleeping here and then tip dunk, chin ups on the rim. You know, that's mm -hmm. just, just being more active than everybody else. And then here, look how quick you are off your feet. You know, it's not always going to be the glamorous tip dunks, right? Sometimes it's, right. it's these little tap ins using your length, 
your instincts and, and just being quicker than everybody else. I, I love that. And then you're probably going to play some of this, you know, like I said, small ball four, small ball five spot at times even, and, and playing as a diver, as a roller in short roll situations. How much did you play at a pick and roll at, at Colorado, and how comfortable are you in these situations? I'm very comfortable. Um, I've been in a pick and roll a lot. You know, I just I do that probably most of the plays. But, um, yeah, I think it's just rolling hard and, you know, just being ready to go aggressively to the basket every time. Do you remember this play here? Yeah. Talk me through this one. Uh, that happened so fast. It was just, you know, just going up aggressively, like I said before. Uh, I knew we only had, like, five seconds or on the clock, so. Yeah, you put him on a poster. He's he's not happy about that. You had the block. Now you had the dunk. Kyler Kelly, we're sorry, man, but not your day to day. <laughs> but I like your patience here. You know, you wait for your guard. Really good timing, good rhythm. McKinley Wright, good feed, and then you put it on his head. So uh, you know that's that's a big time play. Now this is last year, I believe. Uh, I think the next step is probably being able to read these weak side defenders, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what happens here, and what could you have maybe done differently? I could have just passed it to Daly. Um, yeah, he was wide open. Yeah, maybe that's the read. Maybe it's you know spinning back to the middle. You got a bunch of different options in these yeah, situations, yeah. And, and so you're going to have to be able to read and react in, in out of those rolls or slips or short rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I think you can improve as a passer for sure. I would say that's maybe yeah. the biggest area of improvement yeah. for you. Uh, but you made strides, yeah, you know, throughout the course of your career. Uh, and then here, though, I I love how quickly you get out of these. Okay, watch this. Really quick, using your agility, just slipping ball screens, and then really reading this this weak side defender. Right, watch this side step. That's that's big time, you know, because you're gonna have guys rotating from the weak side regularly in the NBA, and it might be a seven foot big. So, and then here against Arizona, spin up under, great footwork, great agility, big time finish. And here, I know this isn't out of a short roll. This is against the zone. Uh, but what could you have done differently here? Eli's wide open, so I mean, I could have, I could have drove in and then pass it right out. Yeah, a bunch of different options, right? Yeah, and and yeah. so just being up, maybe look opposite. You got McKinley there. Uh, maybe it's an attack and a, and a dump off. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's going to be very quick in the NBA, right? It's it's read and react. Uh, right. Teams want you to be able to just play straight off instincts. So you know, being able to make those reads, I think, is going to be really important and. Uh, but again, you know, I, th I think you made great strides at that uh, throughout the course of your college career. Now, we said you're not going to play in the post a ton, but if you're screening, it's a very switch-heavy NBA, you know, so, so you might be on the block against the small. We saw you with a lot of kind of inside pivot face-up jumpers. We saw you with some back shoulder fadeaways, and that's what you do really well here. You got Bryce Wills on you. You feel the defense. Just a short, simple back shoulder fadeaway, I think that's going to come in handy. Now, the next step is passing out of these two, right? What do you see here? Track is wide open. Yep. Sean. Yep. What do you guys call him? Track. Why is that? He's a, he's a producer, or he used to be. Oh, okay. You've been yeah. in the studio or what? I try, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday. Um, yeah. yeah, so when you turn over that right shoulder, just being able to know where your teammates are and, and the hit out. To Deshaun, uh, you know, yeah. he's, he's one of your better shooters. But mm -hmm. here, I think you did a really nice job, okay? You got Remy Martin on you on the switch. Watch this. Super instinctual. Uh, it's a great read, man. Just really, really simple basketball. Gatling, one of your better shooters also. Mm -hmm. And then here against Kansas, what are you looking at here? So you got Anaruna kind of fronting you. All right, I'm under the basket, so I'm not just going to force it. Yep. And All right, he's wide open. That's a great read, and, and he's what a stretch four, right? Right. So you get it to Seward, and that's a good look for him. But then you don't give up. You're still active, and then watch this. Boop! Just a little drop off. You know mm -hmm. that's great. Multiple efforts in one play. Uh, that's big time. Now you're shooting. I know this has been a big emphasis for you uh, throughout the course of your career, right? And every year you made you know major progress. I think as a freshman you were 0 for six from three, and then as a sophomore. I think, what, you made maybe five threes, mm, right. six threes. Yeah. And then yeah. this past year, 13 for 30, 42% from three. We're going to go through some clips here where I thought you were really good and then maybe point out some, some tendencies. So one thing I noticed in these mid-range spots is just fill, finishing your shot. You know, a lot of times I feel like you pull, pull your follow-through. Do you feel that way? No, I do. I do. 
And it's a simple thing, right? And I know sometimes it looks flashy, you know, to kind of pull it and run down. But if you finish your shot, I think you're going to have more success. Now, take me through, though, here, looking at the hands. What's wrong with the hands? Uh, I shot it and my hands is they have sweat on them. So all right, as long as as long as you're being real, because you know everybody hates that guy who every time they miss, they're right. looking at their hands. It's on the hand, so don't be that guy if the hands aren't sweaty. But uh, no, and, and here's I think a perfect example of you staying in your shot. Now watch this: hands and feet ready. You're on balance, holding your follow through splash. Uh, that that's big time. Now here you can see it just. It, it, you can be a little quicker getting into your shot, right? Yeah. Right. Do you feel that way? Yeah. What is the, what is the key to that? Just being low, um, catching it at night, you know, bringing it down. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and you can see kind of just, you know, a little bit slower than you'd like, especially when you're going to – if you're playing on the wing, you're going to have Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler, these type of guys closing mm-hmm. out to you as opposed to, you know, some four or some five that, that played mm-hmm. in the Pac-12. So you're going to have to be more ready with your hands and feet. But this is – I think the ideal example, okay? Because you're rushed, it's late clock. You got to be ready and, and watch this. You pop to space, hands and feet ready on the hop. That's perfect. Uh, you stay in your shot. I mean, that's that's a big time shot right there. Did you feel good about that one? Oh yeah, definitely. And you got the you love this little finish here. The uh what's what's up <laughs> with this? I don't know. I just landed like that. I feel <laughs> like I knew it was going in, so and yeah, that's that's it, man. I think that's that's the prototype shot for you right there. That's that's the perfect example. So I, I don't see any reason why you can't be a really successful, you know, shooter at the NBA level, even from mm-hmm. NBA three. You have very simple, compact mechanics. Uh, so I, I think you're going to keep progressing there. Now the next step is they're going to start running you off those spots, or they're going to be closing out to you, right? Um, right. Uh, now here, this is perfect. Okay, what happens here? So they're going to run you off. You're coming down, drag screen. And you just oh, yeah. attack under control, right? Right, right. Long strides to the rim, one dribble, mm-hmm. slow up, little push shot. That's perfect. That's great basketball. Now, one thing I think you're going to be playing out of these dribble handoffs a little bit more also, making yeah. sure that you know you allow the guard to come off and, and get it clean because this is the type of situation you might be in, okay? Pop to space, and now it's either a ball reversal or into a dribble handoff. Yeah. And just making sure that you know, you're, you're strong with the ball. Marcus Garrett's a really good defender, but making yeah. sure you're strong with it and then go get it to McKinley, right? Right, right. And then he kind of swipes around and gets it. But, uh, you know, going into the final section here, like I said, I think your offensive game has, has grown, you know, over the course of your collegiate career. Stepping out, shooting threes now, put it on the deck a little bit more. And I think teams like to see that, that rate of improvement. Uh, so finishing, how do you feel you are as a finisher? Uh, I think I play above the rim. Um, I do feel like that I need to be getting stronger, obviously. Um, but other than that, I feel like I'm all right. Yeah, I mean, you're explosive. Do you know your vertical? 45. 45, okay. It's same as me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I mean, your your ability to get up and finish over guys is, is clearly going to help you, you know, right yeah. away in the NBA. I mean, you got the springs in your legs. Now I think it's about being able to add a little bit more craft at the rim because, you know, now you're going to be facing Rudy Gobert at the rim. You're going to be facing Steven Adams, Joel Embiid. Those guys don't like getting put on posters, especially by a rookie, Mm -hmm. you know, so you might, you might have to add a little bit more at the rim. So here against USC, Onyeka Kongu at the rim, maybe it's an extension with the left. Uh, Anything you would have done differently here? What do you see here? I should have finished from my left. I also could have passed it out. Yeah, but I mean, you're right. You're right at the rim. Maybe just extending with your left and and, yeah. and being more comfortable there. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what that is. And then here, what do you see on this next one? Okay, where this one's against UCLA. This is, you're going to be in these type of situations a decent amount. I think that I was rushing it. And I like the idea with the yeah. Euro, though. You know, because was, yeah. you're going to face those type of weak side defenders in the NBA. You're going to be in space more, so you hit them with the Euro. But again, maybe it's just reach around and extend with the left right. and, and use that seven foot wingspan to, to unravel at the rim. But the one shot that's going to help you in a huge way, I think is you have these little, sh- these little push shots, these floaters. Do you, do you feel comfortable with those? And you've always had those in your game. Yeah, I do feel comfortable. Uh, I work, I work on my floaters a lot during the summer with McKinley. So I was just like, why not use it? Yeah. And that's, that's huge for, 
you know, smaller guys like you're, you know, not that you're smaller, but if you're going to be playing some of that small ball four here and there, then you're going to need that if you're diving down to the rim and you got a shot blocker mm-hmm. rotating over, right? And right. I mean, that's one of the first things that stood out to me is that you have great touch on these, uh, whether it's, you know, against an Isaiah Stewart in the zone, um, here again against, against Washington in the zone, you kind of sneak along the baseline here, a little hop step. And that's where the Sean Marion comp comes in for me a lot because he was really, really good at those shots. And I think you're going to make a living on dunks, spot up threes, uh, you know, run outs, and then these. You know, that's, that's going to be you to me on the offensive end. So I really appreciate, you know, you taking the time to sit down and talk. And it's been cool to see your progression, you know, over the course of your career at, at Colorado. And I think you have a bright future ahead of you. So I, I really appreciate it again. Appreciate you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.